The Pacers make their move. They have moved on from wing guard Keelan Martin. He has been waived. He is no longer on the team. They open up a roster spot. They save some money. They can now tweak their roster with the trade deadline in just 33 days. That could mean something. And the Pacers tweaking their roster near the rebuilding could mean a lot. Lots to get to on today's Locked On Pacers podcast. You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers as always. My name's Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and the West Side Community News, and I'm hosting today's show solo despite what I said yesterday, what we were going to be talking about, because the Pacers changed things up on me and decided to make their moves a day early, and the Pacers, ahead of the cutdown deadline, have waived Keelan Martin. They have parted ways with the forward who fought to make the team this year. They've opened up a roster spot. They've saved some money, and now they have a lot more flexibility. So there's a lot to get to from this, and I love these 30-minute podcasts on minor moves because it's sometimes less about the move and more about what it means the Pacers could do, what it means the Pacers might do going forward, and what the ripple effects are often stronger than the move itself on these minor moves. And that is probably going to be the case here, but there's still a ton to break down with this. Pacers announced earlier today that they were – letting go of Keelan Martin. And Martin had a wonderful start to the season, right? He fought to even make this team. He, uh, Rick Carlisle was praised him often early. He got a huge jump in the rotation, and they needed him. He was playing like 15, 20 minutes a game. He got a start. Like, he had valuable minutes for this Pacers team this year. And for a while, I kind of thought he was safe, but had some really stinky performances of late and then got a DNP earlier this month, was barely playing at the end of last month. And we'll talk about his performances in particular in more detail soon. And then when Kiefer Sykes joined the team, I always thought Sykes was the most likely non-guaranteed guy to get waived. But, you know, Sykes has played really well. And with McConnell out for so long, they desperately need point guards. Carlisle loves Kiefer Sykes. So I think Sykes leapfrogged Martin in the last couple days, honestly, with his, you know, his average 20 points per game in the last two has looked very, very useful as a point guard. He jumps Keelan Martin in the, you know, the, the power rankings of the non-guaranteed contract guys, which is O'Shea Brissett, Kiefer Sykes, and Keelan Martin. And so the Pacers decide they want to free up a roster spot. They're going to cut the lowest guy on that list, and that for them is Keelan Martin. So why did they do this? Why now? What does this mean for Martin? And then we'll get to what can the Pacers do? What other options do they have? Who could they sign? All that stuff. we got a lot to talk about today. So first up is, of course, why now? And the, the real reason is if you listened to the show earlier this week, there's a guaranteed date coming up, and it's really today, the 7th, for you listening, but it's technically the 10th where if a player is on a roster at that point, their contract is guaranteed for the rest of the season. And so Keelan did not have a guarantee in his deal. So by cutting him before the 7th and allowing him to clear waivers before the 10th, the Pacers save money in freeing up a roster spot. If they cut anyone or if they cut anyone besides O'Shea, Kiefer, and Keelan, they would not have saved money. But by cutting Keelan, specifically, they do save money. His contract was $1.7 million this season. Up to this point in the year, he's made about... Eight, a little shy of 900000 is what his cap it will end up at. So they save about 800000 in this move. And, um, the, you know, that that's important. Excuse me. They, he will have been paid about 800000 They'll save just shy of 900000 in this move. And that is more than a full minimum for the rest of the season. So if the Pacers do replace him immediately, they will save some money uh, by doing so. And, you know, it doesn't take a genius to, to see what's going on with the team recently and figure out who they might be targeting, but they have lots of options they could do that isn't just signing someone immediately to that spot. So that's why they did it right now, because they can save some money and add a player to their team that they think might be a better fit, or they could even re add Martin. And I'll talk more about that later, but that's why they did it now. And the other reason it's now instead of tomorrow is, you know, obviously tomorrow's the deadline and maybe we'll see a cut then. And, We've already seen a few other guys cut with this deadline coming up, but today is the day that they, the Pacers kind of deliberate on who they would consider waiving, and they don't have practice today. They do tomorrow. If they had their deliberation meeting and decided on it now, there's no point of waiting a day, especially with Martin in isolation and unable to practice tomorrow. There's no point of waiting a day and then doing it when they could save the money now. So that's why now he was the easiest cut of the non-guaranteed guys, and Sykes made that the case, right? A week ago, Keelan was probably over Kiefer Sykes, but Sykes has played very well, uh, filling in as the starting point guard with Brogdon and McConnell out. 
and they'll need him to be the backup going forward with McConnell out for more months. So Sykes earned the spot over Keelan. That's kind of how I assess that. You know, if you listened earlier this week when we were talking about non-guaranteed guys, Sykes was the guy we thought had the best chance of getting cut, but he earned it. He played very well. And then obviously Lance playing well is is a puts a wrinkle in things. Maybe the pitchers want to keep him, or maybe Dwayne Washington who's playing well. Maybe they want to keep him. Maybe there's an external guy they like. There's a lot of options. We'll get to those. But those factors all happening about the same time. Dwayne playing well. Kiefer playing well. Lance playing well. Uh, other option dates coming up for 10 days. Trade can expand on the 15th. All this stuff happening at the same time, right when they don't need Keelan as much, made him a little more expendable. So it made sense to do it. So another why reason is, they get more flexibility from a guy that, frankly, was kind of having a downtime, right? If you look at his game log, yes, he had a great November, was very useful, nearly approached 30 minutes in a couple games uh, when they were playing decent basketball, right? And then he really trickled off. And then he against Detroit on the 16th of December, his first DNP in a while. He'd been in the rotation for a while. That game, he did not play. Brogdon was out for that game, and he still couldn't touch the floor. The backup wings were Duarte, Lambert, and Craig. And from that point on, he played nine minutes the next game, two minutes and 26 seconds the next game, and seven minutes the following game. And so until COVID hit the team, he couldn't get back in the rotation. So he was out of Carlisle's top 12, basically, at that point, right? So that was kind of the point where he he probably wasn't going to play much the rest of the way. And what kind of led to that? Well, he was playing a lot. He was playing well. But let's talk about Keelan Martin's season and why... You know, his on-the-court production made this made this also led to this because his defense was pretty good this year. Definitely a step forward from last year. He, he definitely improved in a lot of ways this year. He deserves a ton of credit for all that. There's a reason he made the team and, and made it through almost half of the season and was a key part of their rotation for two months. But Keelan Martin's first six games this year, and he was really earning that spot and coming around screens and hitting these jumpers and getting praise from his teammates, 53% on three-pointers in those six games. The next 11 games, he made five total three-pointers. Five total threes in the next 11 games. He shot 14.7% from deep in that span. Saw his minutes at the start of that. He played 25 in a game, 27, 26. At the end stretch, 13, 15, 17, less than nine and a half. Clearly his effectiveness dipped when his three-point ball went away, and then it stabled out a little bit. He's had two decent performances in the last 10 games, and it's at 36%, but even that is not quite enough for him to be Better than Tory Craig or more useful than Justin Holiday. Even with Holiday struggling, you prefer Justin over over what Keelan had given you and he was missing. And you know, Duarte set to return basically in the jazz game or maybe even practice Friday. Right. They'll have their wings back that he just wouldn't be playing even when he returned. So his dip in performance, the timing of the contract, the guarantees, the savings, it all adds up to a, a waiver. And now they have more flexibility, right? They can sign a minimum guy and save some money. They can make a lopsided trade. We'll get to all that in a minute. You know, adding flexibility for a team that could be going down a ton of different paths in the next couple days, in the next couple, in the next month or so, I shouldn't say a couple days, in the next month or so is really important, right? They, any, any flexibility is nice or even the option to add a guy you really like right now is nice. So lots of reasons to do it. And, you know, credit to Keelan. He fought really hard to be on this team for the last two years as the 15th guy. I, was, I didn't think he'd make the team this year, and he did. He deserved a ton of credit for fighting to get to this point, but it's not surprising that the Pacers ultimately chose the route that they did. But it also does not mean the end of Keelan Martin's career, either in Indiana or in general. His contract is still pretty good, like $1.7 million cheapo dollars for a, a potentially rotation wing is like pretty attractive to any team in the NBA, and since it was a minimum exception deal, any team can claim him if they want him. Perhaps he gets scooped up as a guy that another team could look at. He's only 26, so he's not so old that like a a rebuilding team might sniff at him, and he's not so bad that like a playoff team with a bunch of injuries might not look. Like he might get claimed. I don't think he will uh, because another team could just sign him to the minimum. Uh, But there's a chance he gets claimed for his restricted rights per se. Uh, Also, though, the Pacers could, if he clears waivers, re-add him down the line. That's not impossible either. He is two-way contract eligible. It'd be a little slap in the face to cut a guy and then sign him to a lower deal, but... He is two-way eligible. They could just re-up him on a 10-day or something uh, come, coming up. So it's not like his career with any team or the Pacers is done, but this makes sense for the Pacers and where they're headed and and what options they might need to have. So speaking of those options, what are they? What do the Pacers do now, right? Keelan could be the guy they bring back at some point, although I don't think you cut a guy to immediately resign him. You don't save that much money by doing so, but they do have other options. What are those options? Let's talk about them. But first, let's talk about two awesome groups of people. First up, the good folks over at Prize Picks. You've been hearing us tell you about them for months. 
Have you signed up yet? Because Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. If you have not checked it out yet, you are missing out. I am telling you, you're going to love this app for the NBA and mixed sport pickums. The Christmas Day games were off the charts. The New Year's Day games are off the charts. And Prize Picks has the best DFS prop game on the market. They offer more NBA props than any other prop operator and offer all the superstars as well as the bench guys, only recording a handful of minutes each game. Anything you can think of, points, rebounds, assists, threes made, turnover, seals, you, whatever, they've got it. And any user that deposits and uses our promo code will receive a 100% deposit match up to $100. Just be sure to use our promo code NBA when you sign up. Two to five players, pick them, and over-under for projections. You can win up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. Go check them out today, prizepicks.com. Use that promo code NBA or go to the App Store, download the app. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Let's also talk about Shopify because Shopify gives us resources once reserved businesses. So upstart startups and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed with everything going on with their business. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility, and it's super challenging. This podcast has grown substantially uh, in the years. I know all about the scalability of of a, a business startup, and Shopify could be helpful for anyone like us. And like like mine, Shopify powers millions of businesses from first sale to full scale, reach customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integration and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Check out shopify.com slash Locked on MBA, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on MBA right now. Shopify.com slash locked on MBA. Thank you, as always, for making Locked On Pacers your first listen every day. Why don't you check out Locked On Jazz with David Locke to preview tomorrow's game between the Jazz and Pacers. What can the Pacers do now? Keelan Martin has been away from the team a roster spot has been opened up it's one of those pivotal times of the season early january there's so many deadlines coming on i don't blame anyone for not being able to keep up two-way guy deadlines coming up you can't add one of those in nine days you can sign 10-day contracts now there's hardship contracts for covid you can cut guys for now but in three days you can't do that more guys can be traded on the 15th of the month it's crazy there's so much stuff what can the pacers do now what options will they have once keelan martin is off their team well, the, the obvious one is they can sign someone else, right? That That's the point of opening up a roster spot is, in theory, you're going to fill it with someone else. The Pacers are a little tax-strapped, but not so much that they're going to not have anyone fill their 15th spot. If you are a fan of a team that has 14 players instead of 15, you should be furious because there's no point of not having a full roster full of guys who can either help your team win or grow into someone who eventually can. It's a slap in the face to fans. It's literally only a money-saving thing eventually the Pacers will will certainly sign someone with this spot. That is what they can do now. They can sign another player to a minimum. They could use the rest of their MLE that they didn't use on Torrey Craig to give someone a tiny bigger pay bump if they wanted to. Uh, and the only reason they would do that is to give someone a longer contract. Uh, the minimum exception only allows you to give two-year deals. Cutting it out of the mini MLE like that would allow them to sign someone to a three-year deal, although it would start at such a low number. But still, there are possibilities there for the Pacers to sign someone new to their team and to a deal that is potentially appealing if it's more than one season. So that is something the Pacers can do right now. They have a lot of guys currently in-house on 10 days that Rick Carlisle is a big fan of. Nate Hinton, uh, although he just got assigned to the Mad Ants, who are playing right now, is a guy that Rick Carlisle loves. He played for Dallas two years ago. Justin Anderson's played in every game since he signed his 10-day hardship with the Pacers. Ahmed Caver got in at the end of last game, although he's certainly the least likely of this crew to get a deal. And obviously the biggest one and the most obvious one and the one who will merit a lot of more speaking time on this podcast is Lance Stevenson, who just scored 30 points in a game and 20 points in a quarter, who maybe they wouldn't assign one of those guys. And, you know, I won't beat around the bush and, and act like a dummy. Lance is certainly by a, an unbelievable margin, the most likely like 99.9% chance. If it's one of those guys, it's him. If they wanted to sign one of those guys, they can now do so once their hardships expire. Uh, Nate Hinton's expires, I think, in one day or two days. And then they trickle in after that. Caver was signed the day after Hinton. And then Stevenson and um, Justin Anderson were signed on uh, January 1st. So there's last through January 10th. Uh, so they have a little more time before the Pacers actually have to put pen to paper on a deal for those guys. So that's something they're able to do. Not even pull someone else into their team along with the hardship guys. It's sign one of those hardship guys in a few days once the hardship deal 
runs out. They can sign a player to a 10-day deal. Maybe this is a bridge. They could sign someone to a 10-day deal. That deal expires. Then they sign someone who was on a hardship deal for them, right? 10-day deals have been available now to teams for two days. Uh, this, this isn't hardship 10-day deals. This is a real 10-day contracts like O'Shea Brissett signed last year before he ultimately signed for the contract he did. That turned out to work very well. For the Pacers, uh, RG Diakono just signed a 10-day deal with the Knicks, for example. We're seeing them pop up a little bit around the league. Bismack Biombo signed one with the Phoenix Suns. So it's plausible that the Pacers sniff around on 10 days again, right? Maybe they want to find the next O'Shea Brissett. Maybe even the hardship guy that they want to add, what they can do, and this is a little annoying for those guys, but what's possible is given the Pacers' schedule, let's say the hardships end on January 10th, and then the Pacers don't sign anyone until January 14th. I'll just use Lance because he's the most likely and it's the easiest to use his name for the purposes of this exercise. Let's say the Pacers only don't have Lance for the 10-12 game against the Celtics. If they sign Lance Stevenson to a 10-day contract on January 14th, they would have him for every game from January 14th through the 24th. Then if they wait till the 26th to sign him to another 10-day, they would have him for every game from then till the trade deadline. So by waiting till the 14th, Lance could play in every single game for the Pacers up to the trade deadline. And the reason that's valuable is if he's on a 10-day, and they get a really sweet, awesome deal where they're trading one player for two, they can easily cut Stevenson and and save a bunch of cat money and then sign Lance again later. Whereas if they sign him to a rest of the season deal, they'll be having a much larger cap hit by waiving him in a situation like that. So that's just using Lance as an example. I'm not saying anything in particular is going to happen. Again, he's the most likely of any of those guys. But, you know, that is something to consider is if they just are, if, if any player is willing to wait two days, and then do the 10-day dance for the Pacers. It could really help the Pacers. It could help that player have a better chance of sticking with the team. I mean, it's, it seems like a win for everybody, although I'd understand the optics of a 10-day for someone who's already been on the team or waving a guy just to make a trade. I get why that's confusing for fans and the optics of that being a bit confusing, but that is something that could be possible for this team to pursue now, right? And that's the kind of stuff that cap smart teams and teams close to the tax and teams that might be retooling or rebuilding. And the heck, there's no might be. The Pacers are 14 and 25 They've lost six games in a row. The rumors already started when they had a much better record. The changes are most likely coming in the next month for this team. So considering all of these flexibility things are teams that in that situation they have to think about. Even though it might be a little awkward for a a few conversations or have some strain for a couple days or a couple weeks, these are the kind of things you have to think about. How can we maximize our 10 days and our roster flexibility heading into a rebuild? So that's an option is they do the 10-day dance. It's annoying, but it's certainly very helpful for a team in the Pacers situation. And this is something I just brought up in the 10-day dance is trading one player for two. And for a Pacers team that is potentially looking to retool or rebuild, you're right, you, maybe you want to trade for a young guy. Young guys often on rookie deals, their contract is less. So to salary match with a vet that the Pacers might be trading, they would have to have a second contract attached to that young player, right? If they're trading two players for just one Pacers player, They need a roster spot to do that by cutting Martin. The Pacers now have that, or it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be a vet. It could be a young guy for two young guys. I don't know. The possibilities are really endless. It could be a salary dump. Maybe the Pacers take on two minimum guys now and get a second round pick like they did with Houston a few years ago. The the options are plentiful and they are possible. And more of them are possible because of a move like this and adding more flexibility in trades. Obviously it's helpful with the deadline coming up and just eight days from now is the day that unless you signed an extension and you're not trade eligible, everyone who signed in the offseason can be traded starting in eight days, right? So that's when the chatter gets crazy. That's when even I'll start coming up with a few trade idea kind of things. So that, you know, with that date being so soon, the Pacers having more flexibility again, I'm going to use that word a lot, but that's a key driver here is really important, right? That's another reason they didn't. I mean, I could do this forever. They can now take on more salary in trades, right? They freed up 900,000 against the cap. For a team that was sniffing the tax and sniffing the hard cap, having a little more flexibility to take on more money in trades opens up more possibilities. Guess what that is? More flexibility. I might as well just title this podcast Flexibility in all capital letters. I'm not going to do that, but you get the idea. They could convert a two-way. They couldn't have done that before without a roster spot. Now they could convert Dwayne or they could convert Terry Taylor to a roster spot. I don't think they will do that for Terry, but Dwayne, it's not crazy. He's been starting for them recently. You know, they just to sum it up, they just have way – more options, right? Way more options. They can add a player. They could trade for more players. They can convert a player. They could do the 10-day dance. They could add more hardship guys. You can go on and on and on. They have more options now. They did not have any of these options prior to making this move. And, you know, Keelan Martin is a – like if they had a roster spot right now, Keelan Martin would be a great idea. 
right? Wing depth is always important. He's only 26. He fits in well with what they want to do. Like, he's going to be the 14th guy on a fully healthy Pacers team. Anyway, that's a good 14th guy. The problem is, for this Pacers team this season, Keelan Martin was the 14th guy playing as, like, the 7th or 8th guy very often. They're 14 and 25 for a reason. So if they were more healthy, he could be a better option. But they have a lot more flexibility and options now, and that's why they did this. That's a that's the driving factor behind this. And as roster churn starts to happen this month, having those options, especially, again, as a team that has the fourth or fifth worst record in the league, I don't know exactly what it is right now, you always want more options. So that's why the Pacers did this. And who could they specifically add, or what does this look like for Lance? I have to get specific with him because I know everybody's going to ask. It's an important topic. So let's talk about that specifically. But first... Let's talk about the good folks over at Bilt Bar. I've talked about them so much on this show, and for good reason, because Bilt Bar is making the best tasting protein bars ever, 100% covered in chocolate, delicious protein bars. It's the new year. Tons of New Year's resolutions out there. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, include Bilt Bar in your plan because they taste like candy bars, but they're delicious pro- and they're delicious protein bars, but they don't taste disgusting like most protein bars do. Right, I love the peanut butter brownie one. There's a, a birthday cake one that came out a while ago that was really good. They're just awesome. They're 100% covered in chocolate, really healthy. Right, 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, 17 grams of protein. So ton of ton of nutrients in there. Really healthy. You gotta ch- check them out, and they're delicious. A lot of listeners have tweeted at me with pictures of the ones they like and have really enjoyed them. And you should try them too. Mint brownie's really good. Coconut almond. There's so many. You gotta try and go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15, all one word. You'll get 15% off your order. That promo code, again, LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. So what, what is, what's going to happen now? If someone is signed, who's it going to be? What could it, what could it mean? And like, I'll call back to the hardships to talk about how the Pacers have kind of viewed this stuff. Right? When the Pacers had hardship needs, they went to the following players. Nate Hinton, who played for the Mad Ants. Justin Anderson, who played for the Mad Ants. Lance Stevenson, who has played with two players on this team, signed by this president of basketball operations, and had some relationship with Rick Carlisle. A very small one. Carlisle noted, actually, that back in 2014, uh, the Mavs tried to sign Lance when he ultimately went to Charlotte, right? That was the extent of their interactions before. But, you know, Lance had, obviously, a ton of familiarity with the Pacers, right? So three of the four hardship guys the Pacers went to had organizational familiarity and ties. That's kind of what they, they do in these mid-season moves a lot. They promote Mad Ants guys. They reward good play from two-way guys. That's something the Pacers have done in the Pritchard era for a long time with these mid-season pre-deadline moves. Brissett last year. Sumner had this happen. Ben Moore had this happen. Alex Poitras had this happen. Uh, Some of these guys turn out to be better than others, right? Sumner was great. Poitras was helpful for a year. Ben Moore didn't pan out the way I thought he would, right? But we've seen this happen all the time. Brissett obviously has been wonderful. So, the leading candidates to me when I think about right now, not after the deadline, not two months from now, not buyout time, for who the Pacers could sign would be internal thoughts. And there's no one on the Mad Ants of left who really stands out in this case because a lot of them have been poached by other teams in this hardship time. So I guess Justin Anderson counts as a Mad Ant, although he's currently a Pacer. So the three names that I would say, if you're gonna, if the Pacers are going to fill this spot in the coming, I don't know, five, six days, seven days, before the trade stuff opens up, the three names I would look the most out for is Dwayne Washington getting converted, Justin Anderson somehow sneaking into the mix as a useful vet, useful-ish vet who Carlisle has coached with and played with before, or played with, coached with and, and been with before, or obviously the big one, Lance Stevenson. And like I said with the hardship guys, Lance Stevenson seems like the most likely by a significant margin of this group, although Dwayne has some utility to me as a conversion deal because then you can still sign a guy to a two-way and have you guessed it, more flexibility. Justin Anderson seems like the long shot of the crew, although he has played well for the Pacers in his three games, especially on the defensive end, right? So those three names stick out the most to me, and maybe there's some shenanigans they'll still pull off with some other guys to get one of those guys on the team or something. I don't know. I'm just spitballing names. But those three, if the Pacers are going to sign someone, seem like the most likely three names, especially internally. And... For Lance, it wouldn't be until like the 11th because his hardship runs through the 10th. Dwayne can be converted any time. But with two-way contracts, starting on the last day that a two-way contract can be signed this season is January 15th. So if they're going to convert Dwayne, the earlier they do it, the better because then they have more time to figure out who they're going to fill in that other two-way spot. Maybe that's where Keelan Martin fits back in 
to this Pacers team because he is technically 2A eligible right now, right? That's another option. Justin Anderson is not 2A eligible. He has too much prior experience in the league on other teams. So, you know, that makes it a little tougher for him to be sneaking into this to this picture. But you know, th- those are options. But obviously Lance seems like the big one. And they could sign him to, you know, they could use him in the MLE to give Lance a three-year deal. They could use the minimum exception to give him a two-year deal. They could even just sign him for the rest of the season. They could do the 10-day dance. They have every option with Lance available. And, like, he seems like the obvious guy if they're going to sign someone to this. I mean, he just had that 30-point game, reignited some fan interest in this team. He's playing well. He played well. That's kind of the crux of the thing is he was good. They need good players. They've been playing bad. And, you know, the other thing with Lance is he is a good teammate. He's well-liked by his teammates. So if it's a, if even if it's a one-year deal for a 31-year-old guy, whatever, the season is sunk, it doesn't hurt your rebuild to have him around for the rest of the year. It doesn't hurt a retool to have him around because he's playing well, right? And he, he fits in well with the franchise. It seems like he could be a good fit on either path. So, you know, he's such an obvious fit that it feels like he is in the plan somewhat. I'm just guessing. Uh, because, you know, if he didn't have this awesome game, they would have no real incentive to, to wave Keelan and add him to the squad. So that seems like an obvious one. But there's also buyout guys, and the buyout market's interesting. Like, they waived Jalen LeCue to have skin in the game last year on a fully guaranteed deal. They waived LeCue uh, on the buyout market. They got Brissett that way. You know, Wesley Matthews was a buyout guy for this team, Trevor Booker. That's just all in the last four years. In the Pritchard era, they've always basically, except for the bubble year, been a buyout market team player. So they they could have buyout options now with Keelan gone. Like, let's say they, do, they just make one-for-one one trades and don't fill his roster spot. The buyout market could be fruitful for them. It's interesting, though, because the buyout is usually vets. Wesley Matthews and Trevor Booker. O'Shea Brissett was a rare exception, but they promoted a guy from the Mad Ends, ironically, right? That's where I talked about Justin and Dwayne. So that's another thing that you could look at is you can't really predict the buyout guys at this point in time. You know, it's usually expensive guys on crappy teams, but... You know, that's another thing that of, of guys they could sign is look out for anyone who's not really in their team's rotation but is a big name around the league. Like Kent Bazemore's not playing very much or at all for the Lakers. They're apparently trying to move him. I, I don't think the Pacers would sign him, but just like that that kind of stuff is what is now also potentially available to the Pacers as guys they could sign. And I think I still, I don't know, Dwayne Washington, maybe I'm too high on him. And Lance has been better than him. Lance would deserve the Pacers' final roster spot more than Dwayne Washington. But just have, find, having another way to have Dwayne be playing you know, he's been starting with all these guys out and be a useful piece. Like they sent the, the G the Madden started. The only reason another like Dwayne, Dwayne Washington's name keeps popping in my head is the Madden's played on Thursday. It was their first game since the G league season paused back uh, around Christmas time. A little, a little after that. And they sent Terry Taylor down to Fort Wayne. He's a, on a two way contract for the Pacers. And they assigned Nate Hinton who's on a 10 day hardship deal they assigned him to the Madden's, which is pretty funny. I don't know if any hardship player has been assigned to the G League before. But they did not transfer down Dwayne. And that seems like nothing, but, you know, he's on a two-way deal. Wouldn't you want him to be getting those reps unless you value him and you want to have him around with the pro club more often? And he could be with the Pacers every day for the rest of the season. They got rid of two-way limits this year because they don't want to have COVID stoppages. So, they could keep him on the two-way and just ride him out on the team. And then they could sign Lance and that'd be done. They could have both guys technically. But why wouldn't they have transferred Dwayne down to get him reps? Maybe he's heard, he's played a ton of minutes, playing three games in three nights. There's a lot of reasons they could. But I just I think they're a little high on him. And they, they signed him right after the draft for a reason. And he's played decent enough in his starting role and has shown some clear skills. So I don't know where he fits in the picture. But I can't shake his name from my head as someone who could be involved in some sort of move for them. Obviously, though, the big name is Lance. They, Lance Stevenson, they now have the means to sign him to a deal for the rest of the season or more seasons than that. Starting on the 11th, they could sign him to a rest of the season deal. If he's willing to wait till the 14th and only miss one game for this team, it'd be very awkward for fans. It'd be hard to explain, but it would make a lot of sense for the franchise to have him do two 10 days up till the trade deadline just for flexibility purposes. That, I think, would be what the Pacers would like, but... You know, then if they do get a lopsided trade in the door, they'd have to do the awkward like we cut Lance Stevenson uh, press release, then just re-sign him after that, after they sort out the trade and stuff. So it, it, that it's all kind of complicated, but you know, that's probably the ideal is the 10 day dance with Lance. And then he joins the team after the deadline for the rest of the season. But they have a lot of options now, and that's why they waved Keelan Martin. They can now add more guys. They can now make lopsided trades. They can now expand the 10 day guys, convert someone. 
There's so much on the table. Keelan's career is not done. And I hope I covered everything that you need to know about this deal in great detail. I love these minor transactions because they can mean so much and telegraph so much about what a team is thinking. I know a lot of people don't think that way, but you know, it, it, that's always very key in these discussions. So thank you guys a ton for listening. Hope you had a great week and are enjoying watching Pacers basketball. They played tomorrow against the Jazz. Didn't get to talk a lot about that game. Rudy Gobert entered health and safety protocols. So the big draw for me was, or one of the big draws for me was going to be Turner versus Gobert after the scuffle last game. That will no longer be the case, but that game will still be really fun. The Jazz are one of the more talented teams in the league. So hope you guys enjoy that. We'll be back Monday to talk Jazz, the Celtics double coming up, and everything else that happened at the cutdown deadline, what the Pacers are thinking. I'm sure it'll be a news-filled weekend for this team as it has continued to be recently. Hope everybody has a great weekend, and we will see you Monday.